Baking and welcome to our children's virtual program book tasting where I read the first few pages of new books that are hitting the shelves of the children's collection. So our new book for today is called Where the Sky Lives. When life doesn't make sense, 12 year old amateur astronomer Tuesday Beals has always looked to the stars above Zion National Park where she lives. Her beloved late uncle, Ezra, taught her astronomy, but now their special stargazing sights are all she has left of him, along with his ashes and a poem that may be a riddle. Then a new housing development next door threatens to ruin the night skies and her favorite astronomy spots. Desperate to focus on something besides the growing uncle-sized chasm between her and her mother, the park archaeologist Tuesday takes up photography with her best friend Carter after they find an abandoned camera. With this new way of seeing the universe, she tries to solve her uncle's riddle to save the lamb. But one day a photo reveals clues about an endangered animal, one that could halt construction. Will the discovery be enough to save the park and keep the rest of her world from falling apart? Alrighty, as always, I will be reading the first few pages. The stars are almost out. Uncle Ezra watches me set up the tripod for his telescope. I think he's worried I'll forget a step. The telescope's heavy and sits on top of the tripod. So if this part's not set up right, the telescope will fall and break. I'm making sure everything's tightened. I push down on the top to demonstrate. One of the legs collapses. Oops. It's okay. That's why we double trip. It's okay, that's why we double check. Uncle Ezra ruffles my hair. He is the only person in the world that I would let do that. My mother, Dana, is more the type to give me an approving nod instead of touching you, which to be honest is also how I am. Dana looks up from the pot of beans she's stirring over the open flame. I don't normally like beans, but I love them when we're camping. Uncle well, Ezra says it's eating them in the open air that makes them tasty. It's almost sunset. We're at our favorite secret spot on land called Hedges Ranch next to Zion National Park. We're allowed in here because my mother is an archaeologist at Zion and my uncle is an astronomer and they're mixing our camping with research. It's a chore to get up here with all the equipment. Dana and I only do it when Uncle Ezra's here to help carry the tents and backpacks. My brother, the pack animal, Dana calls him. We found an open field with the best view of the stars, or Ezra did. So Tuesday, are you going to be an archeologist like me or an astronomer like your uncle Ezra? Dana takes out a spoonful of beans, blows on them and tastes them. I recommend archeologists so you can get some sunshine once in a while. Your uncle's basically a vampire. What is this, some kind of competition? Uncle Ezra laughs, setting the telescope on top of the tripod and tightening the bolts. Isn't everything with us? Dana gestures at the blanket next to her. On it sets some tiny pottery shards that we found earlier in the day, probably from a tribe that once lived near here. Actually, Ezra was the one who found them. Dana marked the spot and will take these back to the lab and look at them under a microscope. I've done it with her dozen I've done it with her a dozen times. Don't you want to keep finding earlier civilizations, Tuesday? Maybe she'd rather be a part of the future civilization, Ezra points upward. Besides, since I'm the one who discovered those, maybe I ought to be doing your job too. Ha, huh? you got lucky once and you think you're an expert. Tina pretends the bowl of beans is a basketball, drawing her arm back as if she's going to pitch. Don't make me throw these at you. I can find a new archaeological site whenever I like, Ezra brags. I'll find a new one up here and you won't even know until I publish a paper. Dana scoffs. It's not that easy. Of course not, but maybe I already stumbled across one, he wiggles his brows. Dana puts down the beans. Wait, did you? If I did, I wouldn't give you the information so easily, Ezra says. I'd make you work for it. Like one of your scavenger hunts, I perk up. I love it when Ezra gives us clues to find things. Sometimes they're online scavenger hunts, directing us to find our birthday presents. But he's also done them in person. 
Really, Ezra, if you found something, Dina looks mad. That's for me to know and you to find out. Ezra grins at me. I grin back. Ugh, don't tease me like that. She shovels food into her mouth. You're impossible. That's what big brothers are for. She sticks her tongue out, which is pretty gross considering the mush beans in there. Now, children, I put my hands on my hips. Don't make me turn this car around. They both laugh. I sit on the blanket next to my mother and try the beans. These are good. Thanks, Dana. She points to the can label. Thank the beanie company, not me. I turn back to Ezra. Why can't I be both an astronomer and an archaeologist? You can be whatever you want, Tuesday, he comes over to the fire. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. A strong breeze whips up and a little stream of bright embers flies out from the fire and goes dark. Both Dana and I shiver. That was cold, I say. Feathery pieces of ash have gotten into my beans. Guess that's one way to flavor them. The wind hits again, whipping smoke into my eyes, and I blink back tears. Gosh, just let me eat my beans in peace, wind! I shake my fist at the imaginary enemy. Ezra settles on my other side, so he's at a right angle to me and Dana. I'll be a wall, and he does block the wind protecting us so we can eat. Now it's like I'm sitting behind a big boulder and nothing can touch me. Aren't you hungry? I point at the beans. The breeze hits again, harder now, at a slightly different angle, and Ezra repositions himself like he's our personal umbrella. I can wait. I don't know it then, but it's the last time Ezra will ever visit us. And if I had known, I wouldn't have changed a thing about that evening. Except maybe I would have pretended to be his wall, too, so he could have eaten his dinner in peace. Alrighty, so I am ending it there. If you are interested in Where the Skies Live, it is available inside the children's collection. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next week for a new book.